الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله we're continuing on with our session on Islamic etiquettes and morals last week we concluded by saying that when we enter our home there should be sort of a familiar there should be a there should be a there should be a familiar type of uh, signal be, which uh, tells us uh, tells our family that you know this is us and not any stranger um, sorry and I mentioned uh, some of the signals that the pious predecessors would have when they would go home you know when they would enter their home some of them would s stamp on their feet a little bit to tell their family that this is us and it's, it's no stranger Sometimes it was by means of a cough. I mentioned that in our time, we have this liberty of sending text messages or calling or maybe of a, a WhatsApp call. Or if it's already known to our family that we're coming at a certain time, that this is also amazing. And uh, we find the, the practice of the Prophet wasallam was that after he would come back from traveling, he would not knock on his door at night time. Just so it would not cause a panic because at that time there was no sort of uh, communication medium which would tell the family members that this is my husband or my son or so and so coming back rather it would be it would have to be in the daylight it would have to be in a time where you know a uh, sort of a messenger would go to town and announce that your families are coming back or your spouses are coming back from this trip and whatnot. We're going to continue on, inshallah, with the etiquettes uh, written by <coughs> our grandfather teacher, Sheikh Abdul Fattah Abu Ghudda. He says that, and this is very important. إذا كان بعض أهلك قارا في حجرته من دارك وأردت الدخول عليه فاستأذن. That whenever you have some family members living in a certain room, then although you might be the owner of the house, but that becomes their room and hence as bitter as it may sound privacy laws apply Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also speaks of this in the Quran so when you wish to enter that door you need to seek their or when you wish to enter that room you need to seek their permission you cannot enter their room without permission why is that then seek permission لِأَلَّا تَرَاهُ عَلَىٰ حَالٍ لَا يُحِبُّ أَوْ لَا تُحِبُّ أَن تَرَاهُ عَلَيْهَا So you don't see them in a state where they don't like, which they don't like, they may be unclothed. Uh, they don't wish you to, you know, they don't wish for you to see them disheveled, or you don't wish to see them disheveled. Hair messed up, you know, clothes all over the place, the room is unclean. So these rules should be set at home that, Nobody could just barge into another person's room without permission of any sort. سَوَاءً كَانَ مِنَ الْحَلَائِلِ أَوِ الْمَحَارِمِ May the people inhabiting that room be your mahram, people who are haram for you to marry, your brother, your sister, you know, uh, your father, or people who are uh, connected to you via marriage, or your children, or whoever it may be. Don't just barge into the room. And inshallah, we'll expound upon that. أو غيرهم May it be your mother, or your, your daughter, or your son. Imam Malik rahimahullah has a narration in his Muatta from Ata bin, Abi Yas, Ata bin Yasar. He says, and this, subhanallah, this narration is really important. It teaches us many lessons. Uh, أن رجلا سأل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم فقال أستأذن على أمي So a man came to the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم and asked Shall I seek permission to enter upon my mother? So if my mother is in, living in, you know, the, uh, my, in the confines of my home Do I need to seek permission to enter her room as well? So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said نعم you know, understand that yes, it is good to seek permission. You should be seeking the permission of even your mother. Seek permission. He said, yes. 
So the man said, Inni ma'aha fil bayt. I'm with her in the home. Meaning she's with me 24 7. She's at times in my care. Or she is in my care. So the Prophet وسلم, said, Ista'din alayha. Seek her permission if you want to enter upon her. So what did the man say? فَقَالَ الرَّجُلْ إِنِّي خَادِمُهَا I'm her assistant. What kind of a permission do I need to seek? So the Prophet ﷺ, once again, because this individual did not get the crux of the message, you know, um, they say in the Arabic language, الْعَاقِلُ الْعَاقِلُ تَكْفِيهِ الْإِشَارَةِ For an intellectual, for a person who has aql, a single uh, ishara, a signal is sufficient. So he did not understand the signal of what the Prophet ﷺ, or he did not understand the message or the crux of what the Prophet ﷺ was trying to uh, tell him. So he said, you know, I serve her. So the Prophet ﷺ said, إِسْتَأْذِنْ عَلَيْهَا My man, seek the permission of your mother. So finally, when this individual was persistent, the Prophet ﷺ had to put it blunt to him. أَتُحِبُّ أَن تَرَاهَا عُرْيَانَ Do you wish to see your mother unclothed, naked? So this individual, out of shock, he says, لا. So the Prophet ﷺ said, إِسْتَأْذِنْ عَلَيْهَا Then seek her permission. So these things are very, very important, once again, to ensure that there's balance at home. Otherwise, what kind of a life it is is, is it when you enter upon a room or a certain confined of a, a certain area of the home and you're seeing aspects which you dislike and you're causing distress as well. These sort of aspects that occur in the home where there's a lack of privacy, I would say, they bring about ill feelings, they take away love, and they, they embed hard feelings, you know, they embed ill feelings in the family. So it's very important. So now you may ask the question, how about our children, uh, our son, our daughter's uh, rooms? You know, when they're not at home, some of us are accustomed to cleaning them. Those of our children who are uh, spoiled, we clean, you know, their rooms. How about that? So fine, they're not there. You have the full liberty to enter their home. Now, some of you may ask, how about the security aspect of our children? What, you know, sometimes, you know, they may be hiding something at home or sometimes they may have unwanted things at home in such a time where, you know, there's uh, all these various aspects prevalent, negativity prevalent. They may have something that we don't wish that they may have at home. Uh, to be blunt, drugs or bad magazines, or other aspects. So once again, these things should be a trust issue in between uh, the parents and the children. It should be made clear that, you know what? These aspects, such and such and such, are out of bounds. You know, you know they are not acceptable at this home. And there should be that connection from the childhood of that, you know, of your child. There should, from the young days, that you are like a friend to them. And they embrace you to be their friend. And hence, there's nothing to hide. And once again, I highlight the aspect of the religious tarbiyah, the upbringing, the Islamic upbringing. This plays a very, very important role in the stability of a child, in how they interact, in how they conduct matters with their parents in what they embrace and what they wish to reject. So it starts at a young age. If we did not get that chance, then you know, set rules now. That look, my child, my son, my daughter, uh, I don't want these aspects to happen in our homes. I don't want you to be hiding such and such at home. I want us to be clear with one another. But this once again does not give any parent any right to say barge into their elder child's home or their teenage child's home, or a child, or a, uh, a man, or, or a son, or a daughter who, who has reached adolescence. Because once again, there is that privacy matter regarding their body, or what they may be wearing at that moment, 
or how their hair may be looking or how uh, you know unclean or clean the room may be so these aspects are very important to keep in mind and Sheikh Abdul Fattah rahimahullahi expounds upon uh, these matters uh, further he says a man came to Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu an and he said astadhin ala ummi shall i seek the per- you know um, shall i seek the protection sorry permission of my mother before i enter upon her so he said ala kulli ahyaniha tuhibbu an taraha subhanallah he said make it such that you wish to love to look at your mother every time you see her in other words that yes seek permission before you enter upon your mother because you wish to see her in every state in a manner where, where you love her and where she loves you not that you enter upon her uh, possibly after coming home from work you open her room and uh, she had just gotten out of the shower or she's cleaning herself or she's cleaning the room. All these matters are very important to keep in mind. Zainab, the, mother, the wife of Abdullah bin Mas'ud, now she relates the practice of Abdullah, her husband. What does she say? That, كَانَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ إِذَا جَاءَ مِنْ حَاجَةٍ فَانْتَهَا إِلَى الْبَابِ تَنَحْنَحَ كَرَاهَةَ أَنْ يَهْجِمَ مِنَّا عَلَىٰ أَمْرٍ يَكْرَهُ Now this is his wife, not even his mother. She says that when my husband, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu would come home, he would cough, he would make a coughing sound for fear that he may see us, meaning his wife, he may see me in a state which surprises him, right? which ambushes him. So I was speaking to some, uh, some of our sisters and they said that it's my personal habit that I don't want to let anyone near the kitchen. So if this is a particular person's habit that even the kitchen is a private element in the home, that should be respected. Don't go near the kitchen. And some homes have the habit where the husband at times likes to take a day or two days in a week to cook in the kitchen or to help wash the dishes or to be by the stove then it should be the, the wife's uh, obligation to respect that, the husband in that regard. Let him be in the dish that he's cooking. If he's so confident that he won't make a mess or burn the house down or burn the dish, then let him be. There's no need to get involved. Subhanallah, Islam doesn't interfere with boundaries. Okay, Go, moving on. وَفِي رِوَايَةٍ عِنْدَ بْنِ مَاجَةٍ في آخر كتاب الطب in the book of medicine in um, in the chapter in the book of medicine um, which is in the the hadith book of Ibn Majah it says that كان عبد الله إذا دخل تنحنها تنحنها وصوته so once again the same narration that Abdullah bin Mas'ud رضي الله عنه when he would enter the home he had the habit of coughing or making a coughing sound a man asked Hudayfa bin Yaman radiallahu an, who was a great companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He once again asked, "Shall I take permission to enter upon my mother?" So Hudayfa radiallahu an, he said, "Yes. If you don't seek permission, then you will definitely see what you dislike." Musa bin Talha, who was a great tabi'i, a student of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. He said that دَخَلْتُ مَعَ أَبِي عَلَىٰ أُمِّي I entered with my father upon my mother. So myself and my father, we were together. And we entered upon my mother. فَدَخَلَ My father entered because there was possibly you know, some known element in between him and my mother regarding when he should enter. وَاتَّبَعْتُهُ or, uh, وتبع, uh, Yes, وَأَتْبَعْتُهُ and I followed him without seeking permission or without saying anything. فَالْتَفَتَ My father turned around. فَدَفَعَ فِي صَدْرِي حَتَّى أَقْعَدَنِي عَلَى الْأَرْضِ He pushed me until I fell on the ground. وَقَالْ أَتَدْخُلُ بِغَيْرِ إِذْنٍ Do you enter upon your mother without seeking permission? What is wrong with you? 
I have, you know, a known signal in, in between you and your mother. I know when to enter. So once again, I made it clear. If you know what times are appropriate to enter, then there's no harm. But he told his son, you don't know what time you're entering. Or you don't, know, you don't have a signal or you don't have a special meeting with your mother at this specific time. So how are you entering? I know what state your mother will be in. But you don't know what state your mother will be in. So even if it's your mother, you need to take permission to enter upon her. Many of our homes, we have this habit of barging into one another's room. This is wrong. Shara'an. You know, by Islamic principles, this is wrong. As it's also mentioned in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا بَلَغَ الْأَطْفَالُ مِنْكُمُ الْحُلُمْ فَلْيَسْتَأْذِنُوا كَمَ اسْتَأْذَنَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ When children reach of the age of puberty, when they know the known from the unknown, when they can distinguish right from wrong, they need to seek permission. This is in the Quran. فَلْيَسْتَأْذِنُوا كَمَ اسْتَأْذَنَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ They should seek permission as it was a practice from before, you know, to seek permission when entering upon certain rooms or certain people. Ibn Juraj, he relates from Atab bin Abi Rabah that I asked Abdullah bin Mas'ud, أَسْتَأْذِنُوا عَلَىٰ أُخْتِي Shall I seek permission to enter upon my sister? So Abdullah bin Mas'ud رضي الله عنه, uh, عنهما, he said, نعم. Yes, you have to seek permission when entering upon your sister as well. So, uh, Ata bin Abi Rabah said, قُلْتُ I said, إِنَّهُمَا فِي حُجْرِ or فِي حِجْرِ يعني فِي بَيْتِي وَعُهْدَتِي They are in my home and they are in my care. I spend upon them and I provide for them. Now he's talking about his sister. So Abdullah bin Mas- uh, uh, Abbas radiallahu anhu, once again he said, don't you get the point? Do you wish to see them, you know, at any state in a manner where they're not clothed? Understand these signals. You don't, at times every single matter does not need to be clarified. Just understand that. Yes, it's an important matter. People have their privacy. We don't want to see them in a state where we don't like and they don't like. So Abdullah bin, Mas'ud, Abdullah bin Abbas عنه, had to put it blunt to Ata. He, he said, once again, you keep asking me these questions, do you wish to see them in a state where you don't appreciate? And then he recited the verse that we just explained. وَإِذَا بَلَغَ الْأَطْفَالُ مِنْكُمُ الْحُلُمْ فَلْيَسْتَأْذِنُوا كَمَا اسْتَأْذَنَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ uh, Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنه said, فَالْإِذْنْ أَيْ الْإِسْتِئْذَانْ وَاجِبٌ عَلَى النَّاسِ كُلِّهِمْ عَلَى النَّاسِ كُلِّهِمْ So asking permission to enter upon any specific room which belongs to a specific person at that moment, asking that permission, it is wajib, it is compulsory upon every person. May it be the parents, may it be the grandparents. Like I said, if you have trust issues, there's ways to conduct those matters. You don't need to be barging into rooms to establish trust. There's a manner in which you establish trust. And that is through friendship, that is through compassion. That is through companionship. And that is through uh, keeping that transparency with your children from that young age of theirs. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all. Next week, inshallah, we will speak about what is the adab, what is the etiquette pertaining to entering upon your friends or your friends entering upon you. Until then, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us perpetual well-being and to facilitate goodness in each and every one of our homes. Inshallah, we'll answer a few questions which were sent in. Once again, if you have any questions, I generally do send an email to the community out before the dars. My number is there, my email is there. If you have any questions whatsoever, related or unrelated to the topic, then send those questions to me. Inshallah, they will be answered accordingly uh, towards the end of our sessions the number is 3094391618 everyone knows my number and the email is imam at imammazhar.com if you wish to leave a facebook uh, you know comment asking your questions that's also uh, you know amazing that's also fine so the question is pertaining to our um, <clears throat> our dars our discourse last week it is related 
uh, in terms of which greeting you should address people with. We emphasize that Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh is an amazing greeting. Can there be another replacement to this? Is there any other greeting which is better than this? So the question uh, over here is, in India, Pakistan, people often say Allah Hafiz or Khuda Hafiz when leaving. Are these okay? Or in Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh would be preferred. Like I emphasize that Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh is it was a greeting established by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which replaced old greetings for the Muslims. Hence, there could be no replacement for Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum is the foremost greeting that that should be um, taken into practice in our homes. To our beloved ones, and to extended people, to strangers, whoever it may be, Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh is a beautiful dua, encompassing dua which encompasses the peace, the mercy, and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower these blessings, to shower these elements of mercy, uh, and to shower these elements of peace upon the individual that you're greeting with. Allah hafidh, which means Allah is your protector. Khuda hafidh, once again the same meaning. They are good greetings. If a person per se greets or says these greetings, they won't be haram. It won't be like impermissible or for that matter, it won't even be makruh, disliked. But this greeting will not be given preference over a greeting which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, preferred and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deems beloved to him. Uh, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa also established as a greeting for the Muslims at that time. The khuda hafiz will not be given preference to the assalamu alaykum in this regard. You know, which is once again a beautiful encompassing dua. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And at the end of the day, this is something that we should bring about um, uh, in practice. And make it be understood that I am giving you an amazing wholesome dua. And I come in peace. And you relive every moment after saying salamu alaikum in your home that look, I... When I entered my home, I said, Salam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, ensuring that I don't harm my family at any cause. So then you have a pact with yourself to live by this as well. The second question is that what is an appropriate response when a non believer says, Salamu alaikum? Uh, so when a non believer, somebody who's not a Muslim, comes to you and says, Assalamu alaikum, what should be your response? Your response should be, Wa alaikum as salam. Peace be upon you as well. Our peace is not only limited for the inhabitants of our homes or the people at the masjid or Muslim friends in a social gathering. Our peace extends to one and all. Uh, in fact, there's a narration at the end of Kitabul Athar by Imam Abu Yusuf rahimahullah wherein he, com wherein he compiled um, the, the fiqh or you know the jur jurisprudence that he learned from uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, his teacher, he says at the end of the book, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's the last narration. He says, I asked Abu Hanifa, rahim, Rahimahullah. Now imagine this is in that time where at times there was grievances between Muslims, non-Muslims. At times there was ill feelings. And at other times there was peaceful discourse. There was nothing wrong in between various um, communities. He said, I asked Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahimahullah, if a non-Muslim says, Assalamu alaikum, what should I say? So Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, which, without giving it a second thought, he said, Wa alaikum as -salam. Say, Wa alaikum as -salam. Reply by saying, Wa alaikum as -salam. Peace be upon you as well. And an extension of that, can we wish Assalamu alaikum to non-believers if they would not be offended by it? Yeah, so if, for example, there are individuals who are accustomed to understanding that this is how you greet, or many of the Arabs who are Christians, they also have this saying, Assalamu Alaikum. They also have this greeting, Assalamu Alaikum. If there is a, an understanding between you and any non Muslim that this is how you greet, or this is how you wish to greet them, you, in, you wish to invoke the peace of Allah upon them, by all means, say Assalamu Alaikum. Uh, see, once again, Islam doesn't micromanage in these issues. Whatever floats your boat, so long as. 
You're not displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, disobeying the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or harming a fellow human being. Islam is not about micromanaging. Just be who you are and extend goodness to one and all. So inshallah, until next time, remember me in your du'as. Apologies, uh, I was a little bit shaky uh, in the beginning of this dars today, but uh, you have those days, alhamdulillah. Those busy days where you're involved in the hustle and bustle of life. You just have to keep going, break those barriers, move on, stand up, close chapters which have possibly harmed you, uh, extend once again goodness to one and all, and live your life. Until next time, remember me in your du'as. Take care, stay blessed, much love. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.